What is happening, everybody? Welcome to the Social Media Suck Show. I'm your host, Sebastian Rusk. As always, welcome to the show. Today, my co-host, my guest, the one, the only, Mr. Blabaholic himself, Joel Com. Joel's over here, I believe. I brought my flying monkey. Yes. Hey, well, hey, it's it's not a it's not a party with Joel Com without a flying monkey. That's true. So, That's actually a thing. They I hear that they say that. Wow. So everyone that's just uh, uh, j- jumping in here, thank you so much. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sebastian Rusk. Once again, I am a social media strategist, just what the world needs, another one of those. And I wrote a book called Social Media Sucks. If you don't know what you're doing, we do the show uh, twice a week, sometimes three times a week, depending on how cool our guests are. Uh, Joel um, uh, and I had some technical blab difficulties last week. No, you you had technical difficulties. I was fine. This is true. This is true. Well, um, in, in either, in either media way, sucks. Either way, you were extremely uh, kind to um, offer up a different day, a reschedule, if you will. Well, the good so, news is I looked at my calendar and there were days in the future. So it worked out for me. Yes. Yes. Well, when you're not gallivanting around the globe, getting paid ridiculous amounts of money to, to, to talk about what you do, uh, you know, you can squeeze the little guys in. There's there's no gallivanting and there's no such thing as a little guy. We're all the same. This is true. So um, are, are you still doing your night blab? Uh, blab talk live uh, when I'm I- available and Vincenzo Landino is available. We do one. In fact, there is a show this evening at uh, 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific, the center of the Blab universe. And tonight we're going to be talking all about Snapchat because I've been on it now for, oh, about 10 days or so. And I've been snapping. Oh, we can Snapchat right now. We be right. snapping we we'll be, be snapping. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking oh. of, I have not seen or heard from Vin. No, yeah, I did hear from him on Sunday when he was talking about um, some NFL uh, commentary. But what's that silly little Guido been up to? I haven't seen him. We should get him in here. He's uh, he's a busy guy. There, I just snapped that. He's he's been uh, doing influencer stuff and uh, you know helping brands is my understanding. So here's what we can do: we can just snap him real quick. Snap code, okay. I hey, see what's you. happening there, you silly little Guido? So I wanted to tell you to join our blab and um, yeah, Joel Com's in the house and snap uh, me. My bow tie. Everybody, snap, up, everybody snap me. Everybody snap now. (laughs) I love that. That would be a great parody for them. I don't have him on Snapchat. How does that work? You add him. Oh, gosh. Mallory's here now. My stalker. Stalker gal from. uh, Oh, I do have him right here. Of course I do. I couldn't live without his karaoke. So um, I put together a put together a list of questions um, for you, Joel Com. Ask and, me your uh, questions. I am we'll, not afraid. Uh, we'll just start right from the top. So, so first of all, let, let, let's preface the whole conversation with this whole live streaming thing. Now, I know that you've been in the social game for how long now? Ever. Okay. So you're, you're essentially a pioneer to it all. This live streaming stuff, the language of live streaming is not new com- conversation for us. But the no, ability... I was, I was live streaming in 2008 when Ustream.tv was made available. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, um, one time for the one time for the stuttering like video, right? Oh, we're we're, we're street, 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 streaming. <laughs> no, it, it actually worked pretty well. We did it out of my office. We did uh, Joel Com Live once a week with uh, my co-host was uh, Dan Nickerson, my VP of Ideas, and uh, we had a set. It was like a late night set with a desk, and he sat next to it, and I had my toys on the desk, the monkey, and my buttons and stuff, and uh, we had a big monitor set up in front of us so we could see the chat going on. Uh, if you look, just look up, uh, yeah, actually, let me find a link. We'll set the Wayback Machine here. I'll find a link to an old show so people can take a look if they- I love that Wayback Machine. The unction here. Well, it's a, the, all the shows are actually still on Ustream. I never use it anymore, but occasionally I'm able to log in. And it, yep, my profile's still there. And if I go to my dashboard, videos, and when I go to videos, there are- Oh my gosh, 138 videos on my Ustream. They're not all my live show, but I will, let's see, I'm going to link to one from 2009. And if somebody wants to, uh, wow, you can upload them all to YouTube now and download them. Huh. 
interesting. That is kind of Well, cool. I mean, what else are you going to do with them? <laughs> I should like send them I all up history. as content to uh, to to YouTube so that I can save them. Save them. Isn't there another one? There's another streaming site too, isn't there? Uh it was uh live stream, right? Yeah, live stream's still around. So all this stuff, but just but all these new platforms with you know Meerkat and Periscope and now Blab. I you know it took me a while to to figure out what my place in this blogosphere is. But when world. I when I no, but when I found out that they send me the archive of the video and then they give me the audio, I achieved three objectives in one. I got a blog post knocked out. I got my YouTube content and I've got my Facebook video content. And then I've also got, um, I got my, got my podcast. Yeah. So that my friend is also known as the right answer. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, absolutely. We have so, a winner. Um, what, what, what did you, I was going to say, what got you excited about live stream, but you, since you've been doing it since the, since the you stream. Oh day. yeah. Well, and I did my first YouTube video in 2006. So I just linked to a, a you stream video there for somebody that wants to open it another window and watch later. Don't watch now because we're here now. Yes. You, you and absolutely. me, us, we're having a conversation. If, if, and if you guys have not done so already, go ahead and, uh, and utilize that, that fun little feature on the left about tell, tell a bird. And uh, invite your friends in here. Everyone that's already in here, I really appreciate your time. I know Joel does as well. We're going to get right down into the show. I got some real, just some, just some real good, good, uh, juicy questions for uh, uh, Mr. Joel. Come, let me turn juicy. the paper right. Right, right. Um, uh, Joel, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh gosh, um, you know, I don't know that I had a. A thing that I wanted to be. I think I just wanted to have. have I want. I know I liked technology and computers. There was no question about that. And so um, I, I don't know. I I wanted to be me. You wanted to be Joel. And amazingly, so, that's exactly what happened. And what happened? So you went to school. You got out of school. What did you go to? Did you go to college? I did. I went to University of Illinois, but I went primarily because it was what you were supposed to do. I didn't really like school. I didn't really try hard. I fell into uh, liberal arts and had to pick a major. So I ended up majoring in speech communications with a minor in psych. Um, I didn't pick speech because I wanted to be a speaker. It just seemed like the easiest thing to do. And uh, in college, I became a DJ. <clears throat> I worked at the radio station there. Excuse me. I got a little froggy that's stuck here. <clears throat> This episode of the Social Media Sucks show is brought to you by Froggy. Froggy in the throat. So uh, I was uh, I was on WPGU Rock 107 FM, Urbana Champagne's classic rock for a couple of years in college. Urbana and, Champagne. Yeah, University of Illinois. That's right. Started um, DJing in a couple nightclubs around town and did that work on the side. And uh, then when I got out of college, I knew I did not want to go back to the Chicago suburbs. And a week later, I was in Dallas, Texas, working as a, a doorman at a nightclub on Greenville Avenue in the mid 80s. Uh, and it didn't take long for me to get on as a, a guy doing the lights for the dance floor and then as a DJ. Um, and it uh, wasn't too long after that, I started a mobile DJ business and it was my first entrepreneurial venture. So I started doing pool parties and wedding receptions and getting probably a hundred, hundred and a quarter an hour spinning records. And, um, uh, that was my first real entrepreneurial foray. What was your DJ name? Joel. This was before, I mean, we're talking about late eighties. Like I was just Joel. I'd come in and spin records and play games hey, and, and, and MC Joel. and Yeah. There was not like DJ Jazzy Joel, you know, just <laughs> that <laughs> I was <laughs> I thought maybe it could have been. I mean, you know, you never know. Yeah. Um, so so uh and you just continued to climb that entrepreneur uh ladder. When 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 did you enter the digital space and say, hey, you know, we got something here um and uh, I'm not going anywhere? Uh, so I, well, I've been in the digital space forever. I had a TRS 80 model one with 4k of Ram and a cassette player for a storage device in 1980. And I was dialing into bulletin board systems at 300 baud with a coupler modem where you'd put the phone on the modem. Yeah. Otherwise it would just be. <laughs> and so I've been dialing in for what? 35 years now. Oh man, I'm old. 
Uh, anyhow, it was 1994 that I started writing to gaming um, companies that did computer games and asking for review copies, telling them I was going to start doing this uh, uh, new software review publication in Dallas. And before you know, it was like Christmas every day at my house, software was coming. And, uh, and I put together a publication and then I went to the Consumer Electronics Show in January of 1995 and my eyes were open to the World Wide Web. And this was a guy who I was on America Online, Prodigy, Sierra Online, CompuServe, Delphi. You got Keenan. mail. Yeah, you got mail. I was on all those. And um, I woke up to the web in uh, January 95. And by uh, July of that year, I had my first website online, worldvillage.com, which incidentally turned 20 years old this past July. And uh, there was only 18,000 sites in the world that year. So I do get to say I am a true pioneer of the web. You, you've been on the internet almost as long as Jay Bear. Oh. <laughs> I've been on the internet longer than Jay Bear. Yeah, I think Jay Jay said I think he's 1994. I think he or 96. Oh, his website. Yeah. No, I don't know if his website says that. I think we I think we had that conversation over beers one night. Um. Um. There's okay. Let, 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 around. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think Telnet. Well, it's it, it's funny to see how how the well, drop, drop my vodka. Um. It's funny to see how, you know, the digital space just in general, of course, all the new social media type of agency peeps are the old school, you know, digital agency and traditional agency. It's just, it's just, it's been fun to see how the, 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 the turn of the tide has happened with everything being so digital. The tide um, has turned. Yeah. And it's so in speaking our favor. Of, well, well, speaking of being so, so digitally dialed in, uh, I'm just stoked about my lighting today. I think it's because it's raining outside. I'm not getting sun in here. I just got, got the lighting a little shiny right here. Um, yeah, I think I'm trying to grow a beard like yours, Sebastian, but it's not working. Oh, this took me two months. I'm really proud it's of it. It's too gray. I'm going to shave it today. Yeah, I, I and you're going to periscope the shave? No, I've done that already. I, I think that was interesting one time, but I, I try not to repeat myself. Yeah, I, uh, Marty, I try not uh, to repeat what's myself. Up there, Marty McFadden, he's bringing us back there. CompuServe, wow. I try not to repeat myself. Uh, yeah, I was on CompuServe. I can't remember the number either. I was on uh, I was on Prodigy. I was on Delphi. I was on Genie, which it was GE's online service. I was Sierra Online, which was uh, done by Sierra Gaming Company. And I was on uh, AOL when it was America Online installed from a three and a half inch uh, floppy disk version 1.x. And if you are a software buff, you would love rummaging in my basement. I have boxes and boxes of vintage software dating back to 1980. 80, I believe, including a boxed copy of Microsoft Windows 1.03 on floppy disk. And and Joel, what do you plan on doing with these floppy disks from 30 years ago? They're part of my collection. It's history. So right. it's, uh, you know, it maybe open a museum one day. I've got a, really most of my collection is old computer games, vintage computer games, because I'm a big gamer. I still am. I play computer games almost every day. If I'm on the road somewhere, you know, I'm in a conference, I don't have time. But if I'm sitting here, I've got a killer PC down here. Uh, state of the art video, you know, four hundred dollar video card in it, and I've got a thirty inch Dell monitor that I'm looking at right now. And if I'm not blabbing or working, I'm blowing up things. Nice. Yeah. Well, and all, so speaking of being so digitized, um, this day and age, we are in fact digitally addicted. Um, you decided to uh, break the addiction for a few weeks, um, a few months back. And take a, a digital detox, if yep. you will, mm -hmm. uh, a hiatus um, um, of fr from the digital world. H how'd that go for you? Oh, it was great. And uh, the whole thing that, oh my gosh, you're going to go through withdrawals didn't happen. It was actually really easy. I went off the grid. I told everybody, I didn't tell anybody where I was going. Some people may have figured it out. I might have told a few people, but at the time, I didn't tell anybody where I was going. I didn't tell anybody who I was going with. Um, turns out I went by myself on purpose because I, I just wanted me time. I went out of the country and from the time I got on my first plane to the time I got back over, I want to say Chicago, 
Um, I ha- I did not use social media. I did not look at Facebook. I did not look at Twitter. I did not look at Blab. Um, no private messages. I had my email, uh, which I had instructed my VA to check my work email and only send to my personal email that which was essential, uh, i.e., there was money involved. And uh, maybe she sent me six, seven, eight messages the whole time. And there was some times I was taking pictures because I was seeing amazing stuff. And I, and I thought, oh, I should share this. And I went, no, I'm not doing that. And I didn't. Uh, and it was great. It was very liberating. I, I had my iPad with me um, so I could you know, play games and stuff. Uh, in journal. I had my laptop so I could journal, but I stayed away from social and I stayed away from work and it was great. It was 18 days and I think that it was um, much easier than I would have expected. 18 days. All right. Well, I'm going to have to give that, uh, I'm going to have to give that a shot. I definitely feel that, um, you know, I've, I've reached a point where I wake up in the middle of the night and start checking stuff and, um, now you know, I wake up every night at the same time, just like, let's wake up and check social media. At yeah, in the morning. Here, here's the thing, uh, Sebastian, is that you feel like people are going to forget you, you know, and, and no, they just miss you. And when you come back, they want, they, they give you even more love. And my, and what's interesting is my clout score, which we know is only relevant if you think it is, went from after I got back, it shot up two points. I hit, like, I went from like an 84, 85 to 87. And it's lingering just below 87 right now. So leaving uh, was actually good for me on many, wow. on many levels. Interesting. Hmm. So, um, well, uh, all, any of you out there that have been thinking about taking it, and I think people take it a little bit to an extreme, you know, you, you, you making, you know, I, I remember when people, I think people still kind of do it and it's really stupid and they, and they, they should stop immediately, but um, announcing because you did it in a productive, respectful way to your community and to your tribe. But like, there's a lot of passive aggressive ways of going, I'm over it. I'm totally, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm leaving Facebook. If you need me, hit me up on my cell phone. Like, oh, yeah. A- I, you know, I ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. My, yeah. I had my reasons for going and it wasn't dramatic about it. And I blogged yeah. before I left. I'm, I'm, Go, I, I said, I'm pulling the plug. There's a blog entry that I posted. Sure. And then when I came back, I wrote uh, 18 days without you. And what I learned, uh, part of what I learned along the journey, but it wasn't to be a drama king or queen or whatever kind of, whatever type of royalty goes with drama appropriately. Well, you know, uh, where, it, where I'm it was for me. That, you know, where I'm getting with that is that, you know, you don't have to be dramatic. You can do it in a very productive way, just like your, 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 your template for the way that you did it was, uh, was great um and it is okay to take a digital detox and people will still be there when you get back yeah amazing people are hey look you're all still there and uh, and in the um the break inspired me to start periscoping and start sharing um experiences and and thoughts of mine with a short form periscope which i've now done 24 episodes of called the top five scope if you're not following me on Periscope, please do. So Actually. let's talk about Periscope for a second here. So yeah. I started doing my morning motivation scopes and a bunch of strangers would jump in. And I think the biggest one I scope that I did, I was at the Ritz Carlton for swim week here on South Beach. And um, 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 there was the uh, there was a swimsuit show. And um, I, I Periscope that had like 500 people on there, right? Of course, I, so I was like, well. Periscope's very useful to be able to, when you're somewhere that somebody else is not, it's not a copyright issue like being on the, an NFL field or something like that without without previous permission. This is great. It gives people a peek behind the curtain. I love it. I mean, that's, that's really the message that, right. I, that I continue to, to push is that social media allows for that peek behind the curtain for brands, businesses, et cetera. So I got excited about it. And then I would do the morning motivations and it started to be more of a chore. So then I psyched myself into doing them because I'm like, all right, if I get on there and I get all fired up and I say some motivating things and get people pumped up, I naturally get pumped up. But then it started to fade again. And um, and then I realized that maybe, you know, maybe I'm not a periscoper. And I, then I started this blab thing and I've been consistent with this. Um, and then, you know, but then I see the periscope community growing around me and the FOMO is just off the charts. So I'm still trying to flush it out. So with that being said, 
um, and this is kind of a, um, uh, a what's it called, um, a selfish question, but it also provides value to, to the listeners. Why does somebody need to use Periscope? And if someone wants to start using Periscope, what, what's a good way to do that? I mean, just in a quick, you know, Reader's Digest. Well, nobody has to do anything. That's the beauty of social media is you get to decide what sites and tools you want to use to engage on and they should fit with your lifestyle. Uh, you know, it, it's anytime we come out there and say, well, you should be using this. People get overwhelmed. They're like, but I'm already having to do this and this and this. And they start letting social media and apps run their life. That doesn't work for me, and it, it shouldn't work for anybody else either because then you begin resenting all the things that supposedly you should be doing. If you want to broadcast your content one to many and engage with people who are watching your content, if you have a message that you want to share, not in this type of format where we're talking to each other, where we have multiple fate, you know, uh, people in the conference, but where it's you sharing your thoughts, your ideas, uh, showing people experiences and engaging with people that chat with you um, via text in the Periscope app, then Periscope could be for you. It works really well for me because, uh, for, for example, uh, what I don't want to do is get on Periscope and stream for an hour. I'm great with doing that on Blab. Heck, I can do three hours on Blab because we're having conversations, right? It's not right. just me talking. I, even I get tired of the sound of my own voice. But on right. Periscope, I can do a format that's short. So, for example, what I decided to do, and not only – so now I'm burping. I don't even – I haven't even eaten anything today. How is that I'm burping? <laughs> Somebody explain this to me, please. <clears throat> so – what I wanted to do is a short form show that would allow me to share whatever it is that I'm thinking that day, but in a format that wouldn't just be Joel just talking. And I came up with the top five scope and the top five scope are my top five, whatever it is that I want to share on any given day. So one day it could be top five reasons to have a guest on your show. And I was standing next to Warren Whitlock in Vegas when we did that. Another day could be top five computer games that I'm anticipating. Uh, two days ago, I did top five worst kinds of Facebook posts. So it could be business, it could be personal development, it could be personal, it could be travel, it could be movies, it could be whatever I want. And I spend a few minutes welcoming people, engaging with them, then I officially start the show and it goes anywhere from eight to 12 minutes. And then I'm out one and done. Now here's, what's really cool. Not only am I Can engaged you do that every day. Uh, I, I, I try to do it four to five days a week. It really depends. You know, over Thanksgiving, I took four days off, but I did one two days ago. I did one yesterday. I'll probably do one today. So, you know, five top five scope makes sense to do it five days a week. Okay. Uh, Mallory has a question for you, Joel. Uh, would you uh, still consider Periscope a one-to-many format rather yeah. than a many-to-many? -many? Yeah, Periscope, uh, Live Fire, which I've not used yet, but I want to try. You Now, Meerkat, Alive for Facebook mentions, they're all one-to-many, uh, whereas this is, uh, you know, this Blab format is many-to-many. -many. So here's what I'm doing, though. Once you've created content, uh, if you're just doing Periscope and then you're putting it out there, it exists for 24 hours for replay and that's it. OK, you're, I think you're missing opportunity. What I do is I have in settings it defaults to save my scopes to my camera roll on my phone or my iPad. Yep. I sync it with iCloud. I go over to my laptop right back there. I download the clip, the Periscope into iMovie, do a rotate on it because I do all mine. Uh, landscape, but when you download them, they come in portrait. I do a rotate, drop them into a template that has mu uh, music right from I, uh, right from iMovie. It's this playful little tune comes yep. in. I put it at the end. I put some titles. I chop off the beginning part where I'm just welcoming people and just start it at the beginning of the show. Export it to a file on my computer. Say in export it to YouTube. I take the YouTube video. I embed it onto my blog into a brand new post and then uh, I upload it to Facebook as well. So I'm actually getting, you know, one to 2000 or more views per scope by repurposing it. And it's living forever out there on the web and on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all I have to say about that. Yes, and you are uh, you uh, you you couldn't have said it better. And I'm doing the almost identical thing. So, um, except for Periscopes, I excuse me, I do use Periscope 
from time to time when there is something that I do want my audience to be able to see, or I'm somewhere like a, you know, a fashion, a, a, a swim week on South beach. But, um, um, I also did, um, I do, I do all my talks as well. I, I periscope all my head. I did, I did a keynote last week and I was apprehensive to leave the comments on because I didn't have anybody manning my phone while I'm up giving the talk. So I just shut the comments off because I didn't need anyone calling me an ass clown in the middle of my, uh, what I'm trying to, 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 to grab some content, um, and then repurpose it as well too. So, um, what, what do you think about that? Is it okay to turn the comments off when, when it's unmanned? I think you could do whatever you want. Whatever yeah. works for you. There, there's, there's no rules. You know, the, the rules of social media are this. Maybe I need to write an article around this. I'm gonna actually take notes. Let's 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 just come up with these right now, shall we? Because yeah, I'm um, I haven't announced this yet, but I'm writing for Inc.com now, and yeah. my, my first articles are going to be uh, going up probably this week. So let's do the five rules of social media. One. Be authentic. We're writing. Here we go. We're writing. Nobody else write this article. This is mine. Be authentic. Um, choose the tools and sites you want to use. Where do you engage? Be consistent. Engage with others. And number five, don't be stupid. There you go. There's the five rules of social media. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with those. Um, what, um, Joe, what's the worst part about being an entrepreneur? Um, trying to think of a bad part because I love so much of it. Uh, you know, sometimes it can be lonely, right? You're on your own doing your own thing, especially if you're an extrovert like me. Uh, I've got to, uh, that's one of the reasons I go to a lot of events, even if I'm not speaking, is to engage and network. And uh, the buck really does stop here. There's nobody else uh, responsible. There's there's no regular paycheck unless I'm doing the work and bringing it in. But, uh, you know, I, I've had staff before. I don't now. I like not having staff better. Um, life is good. Yeah, I agree with that. The freedom, you can't put a price tag on, on, on the freedom of being an entrepreneur. Um, it has its ups and downs, but I always like to say, you know, if I'm going to have the financial stress of a job and a boss, I'm just going to create that financial stress myself and eliminate the boss part. Yeah. I just, I don't work well for others. It's, you know, unless oh, I'm a horrible employee. Yeah. Awful. Unemployable. I think that would be a that's a great shirt right there. Unemployable, unemployable, one hundred percent unemployable. Um, um, what's oh, I need to answer a question here. No, I do not have uh, acid reflux, but thank you. <laughs> I do. Um, um, maybe it's the bourbon. Um, the what? Uh, what's What's the best piece of social media advice you've ever received? Now you're going to make me think. What has somebody told me? Well, can I can I expand it from social media advice to just general um, advice, which I can apply to social sure. media and life? Sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. You can actually that. do whatever you want, Joel. That's right. I can. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the best advice that I ever got came from Zig Ziglar. Um, back in 1989, I was reading his book, Born to Win, and I went to a three-day seminar in uh, Dallas. This is before I had you know, money, so it was $500 for three days back then. That was a lot. And Zig taught a couple things, which still, um, they stick with me. And uh, one of them is that you get what you want when you help enough other people get what they want. Yeah, it's about it's about giving. It's about the law of sowing and reaping. It's about doing good stuff and not worrying about how the payback is going to come. So many people are in the what's in it for me. And I've learned that if you um, find out where needs are and help people, that uh, there are many of them where there'll never be a what's in it for you. But the more people you help, 
and the more stuff comes coming back around to you. The other thing that uh, he said was, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I'm not always good at caring. I try to be, I aspire to be, but uh, you know, I can be just as selfish as anybody else and and have that mindset of, you know, what's in it for me. And, and I have to be very mindful of that and aware that, uh, hey, guess what? It's not about me. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Bob Berg came up again. I guess we were just talking about Bob Berg. Uh, right on my shelf. In fact, I did a top five scope a couple of weeks ago, and it was it was top five books you need to read. And one of them was The Go-Giver. All right. Can someone please uh, tweet Bob and let him know that um, we've, been t- we, we've been talking about him on the Social Media Suck show for the past two days. We may need to get Bob on the show here uh, before too long. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch brought up one of his other books yesterday. Hello. Uh, at- adversaries into allies yeah yes so uh yeah and zig is uh zig is great and the best part about uh zig is that um um you know his legend lives on so does his brand and so does all of the seeds that he planted while he was here um i believe all of his you can pick up one of his books from the 80s and it's still uh relevant today yeah and it still impacts you just as much right Totally. I got a chance to see him a couple. I was probably uh, probably nine or ten years ago for those get motivated seminars. He was traveling around yeah, the world. With. I remember those. And uh, you know it was a pitch fest, but you still got a good solid hour of zig. So uh, uh, it was good to uh, to to meet him. Um, uh, let's move. Let's move right down the list here. Moving so you, right along. Yeah, we're we're moving right along here. We're moving and shaking. By the way, if anybody has any questions, thoughts, ideas, concerns, you'd like to hop in the the uh, the hot seat here. It's not very hot. It's, it's a cool seat. Um, and uh, chat it up with Joel or myself. Maybe you have questions for Joel. Feel free to hop in real quick. And uh, yeah, so you've written about seventy four books. Um, <laughs> you know, when did uh, when did you start this whole? Uh, when did you get the writing itch? Because it took me. I mean, wow, well, that whole book project's another story. But yeah, um, you know, I want to say it was nineteen. For me, it was more the entrepreneurial itch and understanding that content and content distribution is uh, the way to build your platform and and develop an audience. So in uh, I had a content site in 1995. My first site was software reviews. It was all content. I wasn't writing at all, uh, but I was developing sites that were family friendly. Had two young children at the time, and it was important to me to create a value that would um, contribute to the internet and and not um, not contribute to the part of it being the, a wasteland and a cesspool. And there are certainly those places where it's like that. And so um, created this family-friendly content. And in 1996, had an idea for my first book, found a co-author, uh, one of my writers for the site, um, Bonnie Bruno, who lives in uh, Oregon or did. And we wrote a book called Internet Family Fund, The Parent's Guide to Safe Surfing. And it was like a directory of, um, of family-friendly sites. But it wasn't until 2004 when I started making money with Google AdSense and showed some of my friends how I was making $500 a day and up in passive income with AdSense. They said, you should turn this into an ebook. And I said, really? I said, yeah. So I wrote this ebook called What Google Never Told You About Making Money with AdSense. It came out in January of 2005 and uh, became an instant bestseller. And it was t- turning that book into a physical book in 2006, which became the AdSense code. And that's where I enjoyed um, reaching New York Times bestseller status and, and haven't looked back. I've done a dozen physical books. Have I'm looking at my shelf over here. Have, I don't know, probably 10 or 11 foreign translations. And uh, just got before our blab today, got off the phone with the peer. And we're talking about a, um, a more inspirational, motivational book for entrepreneurs that we want to do for 2016. That's fantastic. So you're clearly lazy in the whole uh, book writing department. I am. So. I, I hate it. I hate writing. And of course, along with, with, um, with, um, uh, being an author comes um, speaking opportunities. You were already a speaker before the books, weren't you? And it was uh, cool. You know, I I really had not done public speaking until I just actually just celebrated the 10th anniversary of my first um, talk. 
And it was um, Charlotte, North Carolina, Focus for the Future in November of uh, 2005. So it was actually after the book, the ebook came out, and I was talking about how to make money with uh, Google AdSense. Yeah, that's that's funny. I never thought about how long I've actually been speaking. People ask me all the time, and um, I tell them about seven years, and I think I'm right. It was 2000 and. Nine right before Social Buzz TV, I was contracted with a network marketing company to work on the corporate side of things, and that involved, uh, you know, I was essentially the hype man, and I hype was like, man. Spoke at, yeah, I spoke at events and whatnot, and then I was like, this is awesome, and then Social yeah. Buzz came along, and by default, I was like, I just got to find stages, I just need cameras and people to talk to, and that started with, um, you know, Chamber of Commerce uh, conference room with three people for free, right, right. Uh, yeah, it, it was a long time ago in a galaxy far away. And I, people ask me how many talks I've given. And I'm like, are you kidding? I couldn't even, you know, begin to remember or quantify them. It was, it, there's just so many. And, and I love it. I love, I think I love speaking um, from the stage more than, than anything because um, it, it, it's all about inspiring people, right? It's about creating content and bringing value in a way that, uh, that you can't do with the written word. Uh, I love, I love telling stories and I love, uh, teaching, um, you know, bringing content that people can actually use. And I love the, the light that seeing the light that goes on over people's eyes when they realize that, you know what, if this guy can do this, um, I, I can do this too. I have what it takes. And, and if I can have some fun along the way, uh, just be who I am and, and clown around, sometimes be funny and sometimes not, then, uh, then it's all good. Yes. Yeah, but people ask me all the time, Sebastian, I would love to speak. How do how do you become a speaker? How do you do that? And I, I did I don't really know what to tell them. I, I, somebody, one of my NSA buddies told me a couple of years back, Sebastian, if you want to speak more, speak more. Yeah, no, the answer is, uh, the answer is uh, find an audience who will listen to what you have to say. Uh, you know, and initially, if you've never done it before and you don't know where to go, then, uh, you know, Toastmasters is a great opportunity to hone your skill. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got an inspirational message, something that would be good for, for kids to hear, then, you know, high schools have assemblies where they give you opportunities, nonprofits, organizations that might, you know, welcome you in um, to, uh, to share your message. I think that there's just, there's so Rotary many clubs. They love speakers. Rotary. Yep. I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity out there and you just have to speakers speak. So find places where somebody will listen to you, even if it's just a small audience, um, which sometimes can be more intimidating, but even small audiences are great opportunities to share. Yeah. That's the only, and I, you know, I definitely, there's not a doubt in my mind that this is what I, every time I'm on stage, I'm like, I was born for this shit, but, yeah. um, um, nothing takes me out of the game more than, um, three people in the room, um, or no people in the room. <laughs> like being the first back from lunch is the worst slot ever to be put in at a conference. Yeah. In fact, I usually I'll ask, um, to be right before lunch. I find that that's a good slot, but you know, I'll talk, I'll speak anytime. I don't like speaking first thing in the morning, but I do like doing opening keynotes because uh, the stories I like to tell and share can kind of help set the tone for events. And so uh, I'm a good opener, but I'm also a good closer and I'm, I'm what I'm good. at anyway. all around just Good speaker, darn it. Yeah, and um, listen, there's nothing wrong with owning that. Um, you know, there's there's uh, people that would say, well, that's just bragging. Uh, I haven't given you the list of all the things that I do horribly. And there, it's a very, <laughs> very, very long list. So when you find what you're good at, it's okay to own that and say, you know what? I'm really good at this, and I recognize it. It's a gift. I didn't like... It really is for me. I, it's just part of who I am. It's not yet. There's some parts of it that uh, I've honed over the years. But the first time I spoke, um, people after me said, you're a natural at this. You, you you make it look like you've done it for years. And I'm like, well, that clearly is a gift then, right? Because I wasn't so smart that I had to learn how to do it. It just happens. And uh, whatever your gift is, it might be speaking, it might not, but whatever it is, that thing you do naturally, you don't have to take pride in it because you somehow, because you have it, uh, just be grateful for the fact that you have that gift. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I, and I, I definitely you know somebody told me a while, a long time ago, Sebastian, um, you've got stage presence and stage presence is not something that is um, learned. Um, it's something that you are, you, you, you're born with and you got it. Um, I still don't clearly understand what that means, but um, Just, I, I get it's great. Like feedback. Some people can, can shoot hoops, right? Right. Some, some people can uh, sing. Some people can dance. Some people are incredible artists and painters, or they can draw, or they can sculpt. Others are great architects. Some are naturally good doctors, right? They, with, even without the training, they have a sense for, for medicine. And uh, that's not me. <laughs> Don't ever ask me to operate. The best speaker Mike B's ever heard did not use one slide deck and he captivated within the power of the story. You know, that is a, that now that is a, you know, there's a gift to be able to speak publicly and have stage presence, et cetera, but to be able to get up there and knock out of the park with no slides is incredible. It really is. And, and I have to confess, I've been very dependent on slides and I think a part of it is uh, because what I'm, showing people i have to show you it's very visual right. to be able to talk about the internet and websites and social media and not have slides uh you know that's really tough i do i enjoy using a lot of videos in my presentations uh because i i i'm i'm just a big fan of video Cue and the I, video. Love, I love to sh i do i show people uh videos that i've created and then i talk about the story behind the story or you know the aftermath of it and uh, people love it and it gives me a break during my presentation where i'm still telling the story but i'm not have to actively do it right 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 oh look at bob burke tweeting us back honored to be mentioned in the company what a good guy i was telling mitch yesterday i met bob a couple of years ago, my, my one of my mentors and friends here in Miami, Bruce Turkel, um, is uh, um, hosted a, a two day ex, ex, um, intensive for NSA members to come attend. And I had the the pleasure of speaking at it and meeting all those other people. One of them was uh, was Bob Berg. So Bob, I'm trying to let awesome you in guy. here, Mitch. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to let you in here, buddy. You, is it not working? Are you, yeah, are you, it's, it's, I'm trying to. Uh, something's something's not working here on the blabs. Oh, the blabosphere. Oh, the blabs. Yeah, some of these, you know, sometimes, some days on blab, you just, you know, you go from top gun to squirt gun. You, you take what you got. You yeah, take you take the uh, good, you take the bad, you take it all, and then you have the facts of life. Th this is true. The facts of Which life. was a great, well, that was a great show in the 80s. Was it, it 80s it was or something. 90s? It, it was It was something. I don't know if it was a great show, but it was something. <laughs> I just remember it was on Saturday night and I couldn't understand why all those girls lived with, um, with the one lady. Yeah. I don't know what was up with that either, but, um, weird, but huh? I always thought the butch one was the hottest Blair. Yes, Tony. Blair, exactly. Of course. Blair, Blair. and Tootie. Tootie was there. <laughs> Tootie. Tootie. Did, Mitch, did, we're trying did, to let did, you, how did she get that name? That's what I want to know. No, Joe. Joe was the one that was the was the butchy one that worked on cars. How yeah, I did loved Tootie her. get her name? Was you know she eat a lot of beans? What was that all about? <laughs> I want to know. Now we got the conversation going when we start uh, chatting it up about the uh, the facts of life. What? Uh, who else? Who wants to jump in here, Mitch? Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I'm trying to uh, trying to get everybody in here, um, but it's not working. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Your uh, Joel's thoughts regarding customer experience is the new competitive advantage and how newer platforms help us help us do just that with Periscope and Blab. Well, obviously, it's all about, you know, engagement. And the thing about um, the new platforms, they allow people to see two things. One, the real people that are behind the scenes for the brands. So it puts a human face to it, which adds the social element to social media. And two, it allows customers and prospects to see uh, behind the scenes what's happening. Because with Periscope, you can show, you can take somebody into your office, you could take them on location in the field. You know, you can show them your desk and where you work. And we feel a connection with people when we find points of connectivity. And so, uh, you know, streaming just offers that up in spades. And, in the, and then the rest is, the you know, the, uh, here we go. 
Copyright. Oh, no. Mitch. Oh. Copyright. Prank caller. Prank caller. Who was that? Oh, my goodness. Copyright um, violation. Yeah. You know, I, I've never gotten my hand slapped yet other than YouTube just saying, hey, you can't use that music and they take the video down. But when I, my biggest hand slap I got was I was watching a UFC fight um, a couple of months ago and I was at a bar and I just did a pan of the bar. Of course, there was TVs everywhere with the UFC, but I used hashtag UFC and they freaking suspended my Periscope account and they sent me a freaking death threat from Periscope. Wow. And the UFC. Said, don't you ever try to stream one of ours on Periscope. We will shut your account down forever. I was like, wow. Dang. Yeah. All right. That's there you go. That's uh that's tight. Yeah, I um if you can do a review of the song, one can skirt copyright issues. Oh, good to know, Mike. Good to know. So I don't know why I can't let Mitch in here. I, I um, can't either. It's not letting me. Um Mitch, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you can't let me let's lock the seat and unlock it. Try again, Mitch. Nope. Uh, I can, I can reject you, but I can't add you. The green check mark is not working. No, it's open. Yeah. The seat is open. He's trying to claim it. Try one more time, Mitch. Just when you're going to get, you know, going to get some good company here. I'm going to, let's see if me, uh, unhost me, Sebastian. Okay. Let's just, let's just try some things. Let's kick the tire right. here. No, oh, no, that's unfollow. Let's see here. Um, do, 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 yeah, I don't see. Uh, it's not working. It doesn't. You can't. I can't. We broke I, I can't. The blast. I can't. I don't. <laughs> we totally did. Uh, we got lots of familiar faces in here. Grateful Tony. Thanks for being here. Uh, Mitch Jackson, thanks for trying to jump on here, buddy, and uh, join the conversation. Yes, next time, absolutely, for sure. Um, there is a lot of awesome on this Blab, uh, Grateful Tony, and, and it starts with uh, people just like you and uh, Joel and the rest of the other fine folks that are that are in here. We are uh, we're nearing our uh, top of the hour uh, with the Social Media Suck Show and our guest and co-host this week, Mr. Joel Com. Joel, final thoughts for our listeners here. A bits of advice, some two cents to maybe help them know what they don't know that they don't know, or maybe just something to help them uh, improve their overall social media game so that it doesn't, well, suck. Well, uh, you know, I'm in the same boat with you. I don't know what I don't know. And what I don't know is a lot. Uh, in fact, I'm ignorant. And you can too. You are. You're, we're all ignorant. I mean, when you think about the vast sum of all knowledge in the universe, everything there is to know, if you were to like put it on a, a, a piece of paper, all this is this represents all knowledge. You couldn't make a dot small enough to represent what you know. So that means we don't know squat. So, you know, I think to always be learning, to always be open, to listen to others and to uh, to seek to always grow. We'll still never have a visible dot on that you know realm of all knowledge. But uh, humility goes a long way when we understand how small we are in the scope of things. And at the same time, how much impact one life can have when we choose to do good stuff. Oh, that's yes. a good place to end right there. That was definitely a great place to end right there. Do good stuff. App. So T-shirts available at dogoodstuff.com. 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 Well, awesome. Um, um, if if people want to follow you, um, they, do they do you go to your website? Is that the best place to do that? Yeah, you can go to joelcom.com on Facebook. I'm joelcom on Twitter. I'm joelcom on Google Plus. I'm also joelcom Instagram. Joelcom Pinterest. Joelcom. I'm Joel at Periscope. Joel come would love it if uh, you followed me on uh, on Periscope because I'm very active there doing my top five scopes would love for you to come. I am not. I'm going to start giving away prizes too. I have uh, I've encountered a site that lets me a tool that lets me track the shares that people do. It's called hang on. Um, I'll find it right here for you. I dang it. I closed the window. I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, but it lets me see people who share on Periscope to their friends. They tweet it who Facebook it. And I'm gonna start giving points to people who watch and give away prizes. I have copies of Lewis Howe's book over here. I have copies of Shell Israel's book. I have ka-ching buttons. 
I have do good stuff stickers. Maybe I'll do that in today's scope. Maybe I'll give away some stickers. We'll start out small. So it's kind of like the treasure box in elementary school, but the digital version. It is the treasure box. Joel's treasure box. Come to what? Joel's periscope <laughs> and open the treasure box. <laughs> Grateful Tony, wow. you can do great stuff too. Uh, that sounds like a strip club. Joel's toolbox. <laughs> oh, wow. SMH. Wow. Um, oh. All right. Well, on that note. Yeah, that was, that's a good. That was a cue to end this. Yeah. Yeah, it totally was. Pull this guy's mic. Wait, wait. Hey, uh, Joel, thanks for carving out some time to hang out with us today. My pleasure. And, uh, c- come come back again, will you? I would love to. Do good stuff. See y'all later. Thanks, Joel. Peace, man. All right, let's see here. And just like that, another episode of the Social Media Suck Show is a wrap. My name's Sebastian Rusk. If you want to chat about social media, you want to chat about the show, my bow tie, thoughts, ideas, concerns, I'd be more than happy to do that. Drop me an email, srusk at socialbuzztv.com. You can follow me across the board at Seb Rusk, S-E-B-R-U-S-K. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you, even if we haven't met or connected yet. I look forward to doing that. Hey, without you guys, this show doesn't happen. Well, it does but it gets a little awkward. Hey, I'm signing off from the Social Media Suck Show studio here in downtown Miami. Bowtie's getting a little tight here, a little wardrobe change coming up. We'll see you guys next time. Tomorrow, uh, Grateful Tony got you on the show. Tune in, same time, same place, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Bye.